Hi gang! I wanted a relatively powerful Corona motor that turned fairly freely, so I made this one. This is also known as an electrostatic motor or atmospheric motor. Here's an overview, demonstrations, and a load test. The Corona motor has a high voltage input side and the ground side. These electrodes are sharp blades that face this plastic cylinder made from a peanut butter jar. Inside, the cylinder is lined with aluminum foil, but the outside is just plastic. These electrodes are connected to a high voltage source at this end of the Corona motor, and these are connected to earth ground. So they alternate, high voltage, ground, high voltage, ground, and so on. Alternately, these could go to high voltage positive, and these to high voltage negative. Like with my homemade Wimshurst machine, I connect one end that previously went to the Wimshurst spark gap to one set of electrodes, and I connect the other end of the spark gap to the other set of electrodes. When I crank the Wimshurst machine, the Corona motor starts turning. Next, for something more exciting, I get out my big Van de Graaff generator. I connect a wire to one set of electrodes and have it end in a bunch of sharp points around 8 centimeters or 3 inches from the Van de Graaff's dome. The other set of electrodes is connected to earth ground. When I turn on the Van de Graaff, the Corona motor starts turning. There's quite a bit of torque here. How does it work? There's an electric field between the sharp ends of the wires and the smooth dome. It's strong enough to ionize the air, especially near the sharp points, and allow electricity to conduct through it. Next, I wanted to measure the torque that this Corona motor can produce, being powered this way. I make it so that the motor rolls up this string, pulling up this container of sand. Very importantly to the way of measuring torque is that the radius of the string relative to the center of the shaft should increase as it pulls up the mass. To do that, these two plastic pieces can find the string, so it wraps up on itself, increasing the radius. At some radius, it should no longer be able to lift it, and using that radius and the mass of the container and sand, and the acceleration due to gravity, I can calculate the torque. So I do repeated tests, adding a little more sand each time, until finally I get a run where it can't lift it all the way. I do it again, but stop it from falling back down this time. I figure out the radius, and I weigh the container and sand. From the calculations, the torque is 0.0022 newton meters, which is 0.00162 foot-pounds force. The distance it went up was 28 centimeters, and the lifting time was 17 seconds. Working with these figures, the work done was 0.0127 joules, and the power was 7.5 milliwatts. Not much, but there's room for improvement. I decrease the distance between the wire and the Van de Graaff's dome, and try again. As you can see, it gets higher this time, so there's more torque. But with the wire end touching the dome, you can hear a crackling sound from where the wire touches the dome, which means a loss, and sure enough, it doesn't get as high. And here it is with my more powerful homemade 30 kilovolt DC power supply. I first run it with the lights on. It's actually a little difficult to stop with my fingers. And this time I'll turn the lights off. On initial startup, there's a lot of corona, then it settles down with less. Here it is again. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more neat videos like this. That includes one where I show step by step how I made this corona motor. Another showing how to make the Wimshurst machine you saw. And one that answers if it's the volts or the amps, the voltage or the current that kills you. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Or give a thumbs up or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.